Hello, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? So, you're Joanna Riggs' newest pirate in training. How does it feel to join the ranks with the modern-day conquistadors? You had better brush up on your history, young lady. When the Spanish explorers invaded Mexico, they became known as the conquistadors, or conquerors. They robbed the indigenous peoples of their wealth, not just their gold, but their artwork, their sacred objects. Anything they did not steal, they burned to the ground. There is more. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the ruins of ancient civilizations predating even the Aztecs. Many of the dig sites were robbed, and the stolen artifacts were sold off to art museums and collectors around the world. Today, finally, it is illegal among most civilized nations to remove an artifact from its native country. But sadly, there are thousands of precious antiquities with highly questionable provenance floating around the Western world. If the American public wants to see our art, they should come to Mexico. An artifact's provenance is the story of its origin and ownership. For example, how it made its way from a temple at Chichen Itza to a museum in Washington, D.C. If the artifact's provenance reveals that it has been stolen, then that artifact must be returned to the country of its origin. No, not at all. Provenance documents are often tampered with or forged to cover up the theft. Because of this, thefts continue and a great deal of art is moved on the black market, even today. Unethical art dealers and greedy museum curators do nothing to stop this. If Joanna Riggs or that overstuffed pillowhead Sinclair had any decency, they would take measures to see that all Maya artifacts were returned to Mexico at once where they belong. My country will have its due, Nancy even if I have to begin reclaiming its artifacts with my own two hands. I am still not happy that such a rare find will have its debut exhibition on American soil. But in my country too, there are people for whom money talks. I will take those documents now. Thank you. I have some business with Joanna at the museum later, so I will return the contract to her then, after I have looked it over. You may consider your mission accomplished. Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C-O-A-T-L. Johanna Riggs outbid everyone. I had no idea a small museum like Beach Hill could afford such an expensive arrangement. You've got me there. I know Spanish, English, Portuguese, and several indigenous languages, including Akiche and Nahuatl, but I have yet to learn the language of glyphs. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. Well, I heard the alarms going off, but it wasn't until Henry called me that I heard the news. I was dropping off the monolith agreement for Joanna, as I said I would. I was running late. I just figured somebody tripped a wire and I kept going. Whew. I have diplomatic immunity, so I do not have to answer any questions. But I will because I have nothing to hide. I was there on business, Nancy, not for tea. She will get her insurance money and forget about Pakal in no time. It's not like her dog died. Then I would feel sorry for her. That artifact was lost to me as soon as it left Mexican soil. So my friend Pakal goes underground for a while until he is sold again. Suddenly, he turns up in Amsterdam or Hong Kong. Unless he is rightfully repatriated to Mexico, what's the difference? I called in that tip. She lied about the cinnabar, and you may not know this, but she has jeopardized the museum's finances with all of her wheeling and dealing. Why should she not be questioned? What do you need that word for? I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory too. I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. Is it right for Joanna to deny me access to these documents? And besides, I will return the file as soon as I have the information I need. In Mexico, it is common knowledge that the carving was stolen from Pakal's tomb when it was first excavated. But no one has been able to prove it. If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, this will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork whenever and wherever it resurfaces. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. Do you know what Siwapili means? Princess or lady. That is terrible news. I hope it's not too serious. Henrik is a student of my culture and my heritage. Not trying to buy and sell it. We don't agree on everything, especially not baseball. 
But I have nothing against him. The red powder that the Maya used? Sure, I know it. They use it at Beach Hill too, do they not? Have you called the police? Of course. Sister Joanna couldn't possibly be a thief now, could she? He called shortly after the robbery. I presumed he was calling from the museum. Is that so strange? Adios, Nancy. Yes, you should. Hello? Hey, Bess. It's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. Anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? Everything was going great until someone broke into a display case and stole one of the museum's most valuable artifacts. A jade carving of King Pakal. Hello? Hey, Bess, it's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. Anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? So far, so good. There's a lot of excitement about the upcoming exhibit, especially since we have the Palenque monolith. Hello? Hey, Bess, it's me, Nancy. Hey, Nancy, how's life at the museum? No peeking at my cards, George. Hello? Hey, Bess, it's me, Nancy. Hey, Nancy, how's life at the museum? Everything was going great until someone broke into a display case and stole one of the museum's most valuable artifacts, a jade carving of King Pakal. Hello? It's me again. Nancy Drew, you will never guess who the cat just dragged in. Who? Frank and Joe Hardy. You're kidding. I haven't talked to those two in months. Let me tell you, they're as cute as ever. George and I were just telling them about your latest case and... Hmm, judging by the way they're hovering around me at the moment, I think they want to say hello. Sure, put them on. Bess Marvin's Mopatorium. George, it's Nancy. What's going on? Oh, Bess has been in a supreme funk ever since the Hardy Boys left. Nancy, why doesn't River Heights have any cute boys like those two? Why? Bess, I'm sure Nancy is not calling to hear you moan. What's the latest, Nan? Hello? Hi, Bess. What's new? Well, it's still raining, and I am still the reigning Go Fish champion of the week. So, you're over your funk? You'd be amazed how letting her win has lifted her spirits. George Fane, I beat you fair and square, and you know it. If that's what you want to tell yourself, Bess. Anyway, what's up, Nancy? Hello? It's me again. Hey, Nancy. What's the latest, Nan? The who? The monolith. It's a giant block of stone recently excavated from a cave near Palenque in Mexico. Apparently, it's a very big deal. They think it's 1,500 years old. So, have you seen it? This, uh, monolith? Yeah, it's humongous. Must weigh a ton. Like how big? As big as a refrigerator? <laughs> Maybe Bigfoot's refrigerator. Sorry, Nancy, but how would a person tell this monolith apart from, say, some other big rock. Well, for one thing, it has Maya glyphs carved into it. Glyphs? Pictures that represent words or ideas, also known as logographs. Joanna says the glyphs might be a message from King Pakal. What kind of message? We don't know yet. Henrik Vanderhuhn, Beach Hill's epigrapher, is working on a translation. Who was King Pakal? He's considered one of the great Maya rulers. He reigned at the height of the Maya civilization. Well, Nancy, you're sounding very curatorial. Very curatorial indeed. We've been worried that you would be a little bored without a mystery to solve, but it sounds like your brain will have plenty to chew on. The whole Maya culture is a mystery to me at the moment. The last thing I'm going to be is bored. I'm sure of that. Speaking of kings... This card game's not over yet, Bess. Yes, well, I hope you've got plenty of bait for your fishing pole, dear cousin. Okay, you two. I'll call back later. So what happened? Well, apparently the civilization was never quite the same after he died. No, silly, with the theft. What happened with the theft? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far, I have more questions than I do answers. But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Honestly, Nancy, it never will cease to amaze me how one girl can cross paths with so much trouble. A theft? When? How? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far, I have more questions than I do answers. 
But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Honestly, Nancy, it never will cease to amaze me how one girl can cross paths with so much trouble. What's his connection to Beach Hill? Right now, he's negotiating the monolith loan agreement between Mexico and the museum. And what's your confusion? Something to do with dashing good looks, I hope. Well, he is a little bit handsome, but he also seems very angry about all the Mexican antiquities his country has lost over the years. How have they been lost? They've been taken by explorers and archaeologists and smugglers. I guess the laws have only recently changed to protect Mexico's rights to its own antiquities. Well, it sounds like he has a legitimate gripe. Yes, but I got the feeling he would do just about anything to get an artifact returned to Mexico. What do you mean, anything? That's what I'm not sure of. Well, let's hope he's just a big talker and not a bona fide vigilante. How so? Well, when I ran into him in the garden, he was acting very strange. He said he knew I was a detective and he thinks the museum is in danger. What kind of danger? He was very secretive. He wanted me to meet him at his office to talk about it. And? Well, I haven't gone yet. Nancy, what are you waiting for? Yeah. What if the museum is in danger? You've got to find out. This could be your chance to foil a case before it even becomes a case. How so? Well, when I ran into him in the garden, he was acting very strange. He said he knew I was a detective. And he thinks the museum is in danger. What kind of danger? He was very secretive. He wanted me to meet him at his office to talk about it. And? I took the subway over to his office. What did he say? He told me about a couple of recent thefts in the art world. He says he's afraid Beach Hill will be next. And what did you say? Just that I would keep my eye out for anything suspicious. I guess that's all you can do for now. What did he say? He told me about a couple of recent thefts in the art world. He says he's afraid Beach Hill will be next. And what did you say? Just that I would keep my eye out for anything suspicious. I guess that's all you can do for now. That's odd. Has anyone else seen him? If they have, they sure aren't telling me. Nancy, do you think he's the thief? I can't imagine that. Maybe he's just an accomplice. Maybe he loosened security somehow to make the thief's job easier. It's possible, but Henrik seems to care so much about his work. Why would he want to hurt the museum? Maybe he cares a little too much. She's right, Nancy. I'd give him the third degree if I were you. Whenever he shows up again, that is. Why? Both admitted to being in the building at the time when the alarm went off. Did they act defensive about it? Not really. They both act as though they have nothing to hide. Do you think they could be working together? Judging by Alejandro's opinion of Taylor, I highly doubt it. But then again, stranger things have happened. Yeah, like in the 10th grade when Bess turned purple in the middle of her class presentation on greenhouse gases. George, would you kindly put a sock in it? How'd she do that? Yeah, and how hot's the water? It's all very vague. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. I mean, maybe she just overextended the budget a little in her effort to acquire the best artifacts for the museum, but... But... Even if her intentions were good. She may be feeling a little desperate to make some money back quickly. Desperate enough to steal the Pakal carving, sell it on the black market, and collect the insurance on it too? I know she loves the museum. Who knows what she'd do if she were afraid of losing her job. She's a suspect. Definitely a suspect. What's the problem? The deal is, he wants me to give him the provenance documents for the Pakal carving in return. The man drives a hard bargain. Why doesn't he just ask Joanna for them? Well, that's the thing. He claims Joanna has been evading him, so he wants me to take them from her office. I feel wrong about going behind her back, but I don't know what else to do. Well, you are in charge while Joanna's suspended. And you have been given permission to go into her office. And Alejandro did promise to return the documents promptly. Plus, if the documents are legitimate, then Joanna has nothing to hide. And if they're not... You're just keeping the wheels of justice turning, Nancy. Ah, the rusty wheels of justice. They need all the help they can get. Talk about a creepy trademark. Oh, I'm just glad I haven't seen it. With my sensitive psyche, that type of thing is like a ten-year warranty for nightmares. Does it have any meaning in Maya culture? Not that I know of. Well, somebody ought to know. You're surrounded by experts in Maya culture, for gosh sakes. But maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Maybe the thief just thinks it's glamorous. Sure. I mean... Who really wants anonymity after all? Thieves have to have style. 
something to set them apart, right? It's not just any old villain that gets a book deal these days. But Joanna didn't take the Pakal. I tried to suggest that to Franklin Rose without betraying Henrik's confidence, but he's not interested in cutting Joanna any slack. So what? She's history? Mr. Rose said that if the Pakal carving is recovered, he'll reconsider. Well, that's just one more reason you've got to find that carving. Yeah, Joanna's ambitions may be a little misguided at times, but she shouldn't have to take the fall for Henrik. Plus which, her presence at the museum may be one of the crucial ingredients to solving this case. Artists. So, what now, Nancy? Here's the funny part. She says I can take the carving out so long as I replace it with something. You're kidding. Nope. Part of her philosophy is that art should never be finished. It should always be in a state of becoming. So, what are you going to put in its place? A souvenir from the Lincoln Memorial? Too bad you don't have your own Nancy Drew action figure. Poppy says it has to be organic. You mean perishable? Like what, a candy apple? A hunk of cheese? I guess that's the idea. I repeat, artists. Interesting. So, Nancy, they would have buried you with your magnifying glass, your pen light, and the keys to your roadster? They would have buried Bess with cheesecake and pinups of pop stars. Okay, you two. This is getting a little morbid, isn't it? They would have buried George with an 800 number to dial a new cousin. Ah, ah, ha, ha. Negative, Detective Drew. Assistants Marvin and Fane out of commission at this time. Suggest calling Detectives Hardy and Hardy. Don't you want to go check out the monolith, Nancy? I bet those glyphs look really cool up close. Have you talked to Joanna since the theft? You should probably check with her before you investigate the crime scene. Yeah, and see if she's talked to the police. Have you asked Alejandro about the red hand? I'd like to hear what he knows about Cinnabar. Now that you've got two of the keys, see if you can put them together. Use your workstation in the lab. Put together the cube key so you can open the monolith. It's like a 3D jigsaw puzzle. You just need to play with the pieces until you get it. If Taylor Sinclair thinks the museum is in jeopardy, then you'd better go to his office and get the story. Even if he is a little weird. The answer is only a few subway stops away. Take that red handprint from the crime scene. Apparently the police didn't need it. It's bound to get your colleagues talking. Yeah, and who knows what they'll reveal. Stop by the lab to see if you have any messages. Now that you've found the Pakal carving, you can call Franklin Rose and clear Joanna's name. You better explain that you can't give the carving back just yet, though. Before you can open the monolith, you need to pay tribute to the first king by commemorating the date of his ascension to the throne. First, you'll need to put a couple of calendar stones on those pegs. See if you can borrow them from the exhibition hall. You might as well get started on your curator duties. Joanna left the task list in the lab, didn't she? Maybe you should do some work in the lab to see what the handprint was made with. Sounds like a job for the Spectro X Archeo Analyzer. If you want that translation from Alejandro, you're going to have to bring him the Pakal Provenance documents. After all, Joanna did say you could use her office if you needed anything, didn't she? You're not done tracking down keys yet. Check Henrik's notes to see what information he has on the South Key. One of the exhibits must mention the date of Pakal's ascension. Then, you just turn the calendar stones the same way you did with the activity in the temple. See if you can put that Maya pot back together. The Spectro X said that the handprint was made of HG and S, right? There must be a periodic table in the lab where you can look up the names of those elements. Time to turn over the Providence documents to Alejandro. Remember, he did promise to return them. Let's just hope he holds up his end of the deal. The South Key belongs to Prudence Rutherford. Isn't she the woman Taylor said was robbed? See if you can find any more information on her. Maybe there's something in Joanna's office that will tell you how to contact her. Now that a cube-shaped slot has opened up, you can insert your cube-shaped key. It's pretty intuitive. When you insert the key on the west side, the west glyph should be facing out. You can't complete that pot if you don't have all the pieces. Maybe one got tucked away in shipping and receiving. Do you think mercury sulfur is something the museum keeps around? I guess Joanna would be the person to ask. Now that you've got the code word, you can get down to business on that ham radio. Prudence mentioned some arts organizations in her interview. I wonder if any of them are affiliated with Beach Hill in any way. Affiliated how? Like as donors? I'm not sure. Nancy, see if you can find any mention of those organizations elsewhere in the museum. Pakal made the monolith block pretty user-friendly. Good old Pakal. When you insert the key on the north side, the north glyph should be facing out. You can't complete that pot if you don't have all the pieces. Check inside the temple exhibit. Maybe you'll get lucky. Check out the phone list in the lab and see who Beach Hill's Cinnabar supplier is. A sleuthy phone caller to 
Ought to give you an idea of when the last order was filled. You need to replace the vacuum tube on the ham radio. See if you can borrow one from an exhibit. Donations to the museum must go through the board of directors in some way. In that case, maybe Franklin Rose knows how to get a hold of Prudence. Pakal made the monolith lock. Pretty user-friendly. Good old Pakal. When you insert the key on the east side, the east glyph should be facing out. You're ready to put that pot together. Once you figure out which pieces form the base of the pot, It'll be a piece of cake. Don't you think it's a little suspicious that you haven't seen Henrik since the theft? Better check in at the lab and see if he's left any forwarding address. You need to get that vacuum tube out of the exhibit case. Joanna must have a key in her office somewhere. Now that you have Prudence Rutherford's phone number, why don't you give her a call? But remember, she's probably pretty shaken up after this theft. Gosh! I guess once you put the key in on the south side, the monolith will open. Ugh, I can't even think of what might be inside. Be careful, Nancy. The villain is probably right behind you. You need to find the monolith paperwork so you can take it to Alejandro Del Rio at the Mexican consulate. Check the rotunda. And remember, to follow in the footsteps of Sunny June, you've got to let your imagination fly. Check out that bull game in the temple exhibit. Here's a tip. If you're five spaces or less away from your opponent, don't pass on your turn. You've got the skeleton key to open the exhibit case. Need we remind you that there's a vacuum tube waiting for you? Time to start looking for the north key. See if there's anything in Henrik's notes that will tell you where to start. Aren't you going to take that addendum to the loan agreement over to the Mexican consulate? Does one need any further encouragement to make the acquaintance of an attaché named Alejandro? See if you can solve that Maya logograph matchup activity in the temple exhibit. You've got the vacuum tube, Nan. Isn't it time for some ham radio repair? Contact the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center to see if they know anything about the North Key. Henrik must have the phone number somewhere. To rearrange those recorded exhibit narrations, you need audio equipment. Check out the Convomatic Auto Narrator in Shipping and Receiving. I'll bet there's some good information about logographs out in the garden. Check out the plaques next to some of the monuments. To contact Copan, you need to find the right channel on the radio. That was included in Henrik's contact notes too, wasn't it? Call Sheila Schultz at Chaco Canyon and see if she has a photo or anything that would help you track down the North Key. To use the Convomatic, you need to get a hold of some headphones. Check the rotunda. Talk to Joanna and see what she knows about Henrik's accident. Maybe she can tell you how to contact him. You've got the right radio channel. Have you forgotten that you're hot on the trail of a C-O-A-T-L in the grass? Just think, you're only a few dots and dashes away from the West Key. Call Sheila Schultz back and see if she's come up with any bright ideas about the North Key. I wonder if that missing knob on the headphones cabinet is the work of Sunny June. Maybe it's dashed with his stuff somewhere. See if you've gotten any important messages. You need one more code word to get the smugglers to deliver. Maybe the word you need is in Henrik's codebook. Time to start looking for the West Key. See if there's anything in Henrik's notes that will tell you where to start. Don't you want to see whether that knob works on the cabinet in the rotunda? So you can borrow some headphones. And get busy with the narrations? Don't you think you should call Nurse Bluefoot back? Henrik seems to want to talk to you. Even if he doesn't remember who you are. Have you heard anything from Joanna since she went down to the police station? See if she's left you any phone messages. Try calling the number for Henry Albert Daddle in Vermilion. Maybe the West Key is still in the family. Still no headphones? Still? Now that you know the visiting hours, you should pay Henrik a visit. See what he has to say about the red handprint and that cryptic threat or curse. Or whatever a yellow death is. Well, Joanna may not be above some suspicions. But it's pretty certain that she didn't steal the Pakal. My hunch is that you're not going to get to the bottom of things without her around. Better call Franklin Rose and see what you can do. Mr. Dado gave you the number for his daughter Penelope, right? Give her a call! Use the Condomatic Auto Narrator in the shipping room to listen to the recording for Exhibit A. Let's say it talks about how the Maya made ice cream. Then zoom out to the exhibit hall with your headphones and listen to the narrations at each exhibit until you hear the one about ice cream. That's Exhibit A. The problem is, you won't be looking at an ice cream maker. You'll be looking at, say, a gardening rake. So then, you zoom back to the shipping room and scroll through the narrations until you hear the one that describes a gardening rake. Match that narration number to Exhibit A, and that's one down, 13 to go. Face it, Nan. You're going to get some exercise on this one. I'm exhausted just from talking about it. You've got to help Henrik remember Pakal. Maybe a picture would help jog his memory. Someone must have a photo of the carving that you could take to the hospital. Check out shipping and receiving to see if your package from Honduras has arrived. Let's see. Poppy said you could take the carving as long as you put something organic in its place, right? How about a nice organic Oaxacan cookie? I don't have a clue. Me neither. That logograph numbering exhibit still needs reordering, doesn't it? 
It's in the main exhibition hall. Aren't you curious to find out what secrets Henrik's key will unlock? Try the lab! Looks like the smugglers have given you a little test before you can collect the goods. According to Maya custom, what would the most beautiful arrangement of those eyes be? You'll have to get a closer look at Poppy's painting. When Taylor's not looking, you can make the old switcheroo. The logograph numbering exhibit is missing two numbers. See if one of them is hanging around in the garden. Take a closer look at the stuff in Henrik's drawer. Yeah. Anything he'd bother to lock up must contain valuable information. You sure went to a lot of work just to leave that jade key sitting in its box. If I were a smuggler in Honduras, I think my feelings would be hurt. Nancy, this is no time to chicken out. You need to march into Taylor's office and do your part to contribute to the synesthetic, interactive, organic journey of Poppy's artwork. The logograph numbering exhibit is missing two numbers. Have you combed the main exhibit hall for a stray? Henrik's Z-Disc probably contains important research. See if you can open it up on your computer. Check in with Henrik at the hospital and see what he has to say about your delivery from Copan. Maybe the news of your progress will trigger something in his memory. Have you spoken to Joanna since Franklin Rose reinstated her? Better make sure you're up to scratch on your curatorial duties. So you've got the raw materials for task number six, but you still need a crash course in Maya numbering. Maybe that Sunny character left some notes somewhere. See if Henrik remembers anything about his password. And while you're at it, Put that unfinished riddle translation up on the memory board. Maybe the star glyph man will make some headway on it now that he's got a clear head, so to speak. Bus! Just kidding! See if Henrik remembers anything about his password. And while you're at it, put that unfinished riddle translation up on the memory board. Maybe the star glyph man will make some headway on it now that he's got a clear head, so to speak. Bus! Just kidding! Kidding? You've got to get to the bottom of the temple exhibit to see if Henrik is right about where he hid the Pakal carving. Maya basketball sure sounds fun. Just remember to adjust your shot according to the distance you are from the basket. There must be some sort of packing list that will help you figure out which crate is which in shipping and receiving. If it's not in there with the crates themselves, try Joanna's office. Maybe Sunny's diskette has some information about the Maya numbering system. Don't you want to pop it into your computer and find out? You're still working your way through those temple activities, aren't you? How about matching the logographs to their English meanings? Yeah, those logographs are begging for your attention. Bess, since when do logographs beg? Can't you hear the tiny chorus? Please set us straight, Nancy. Please! Check out that maze puzzle in the temple. If you get stuck, you may need to refer back to the notes of the infamous Sunny June. Joanna said that the code to open that crate is 0677. So what's the holdup? If you want the password for Sunny's diskette, you're going to have to think like Sunny. Work like Sunny. Maybe even snack like Sunny. If you solve that computer quiz on the first level of the temple, you can move to the next level. Yeah, and who knows what's waiting for you there. The world of the maze can be a little disorienting. When in doubt, stay to the right. Nan, the land of carving is the east key. Are you just going to leave it there in the box for the villain to snatch up? Think, Nancy. You've seen the evidence for Sunny's password. You've stared right into its chocolatey face. Stop by the hospital and see if Henrik's in the mood to walk down memory lane. Maybe he's made some headway on that riddle translation. If you solve the computer quiz on level 2 of the temple, you can get down to level 3. And that's where things will really get interesting. Did the package from Prudence Rutherford arrive yet? You'd better check. If you want to reorder those logograph numbers correctly, you're going to have to take a closer look at the information on Sunny's disc. Did that glyph on the riddle translation look familiar to you? That is, did it compute in any way? To complete the calendar activity, you need to turn those replica calendar stones until they read the date that's asked for in the exhibit directions. Are you just going to leave the copy of Prudence's carving there in the box for the villain to snatch up? It's not like you, Nan. Some of the logograph numbers are Pretty straightforward. The dots and bars are anyway, but those gods can be tricky. Look carefully at the descriptions in Sunny's notes. Bet you've never come across a guy with a removable jaw before. Something on Henrik's disc must explain the plot he suspects, and the reason he took the pakal. Better spend some more time exploring his notes. You need to complete that Maya God matchup activity. After everything you've learned from the exhibits around the museum, it should be a cinch. Has anything arrived from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center? Check shipping and receiving. Why don't you introduce yourself to Henrik Vanderhoon? His expertise is bound to come in handy. One of the contacts on Henrik's disc is very important to you. 
if you want to outsmart the snake in the grass who's trying to snatch up all those keys. Something tells me there's an inside joke in that last computer quiz. A little nonsense, courtesy of Sunny June? See if Henrik knows anything about Pakal's personal phobias. Or Sunny's sense of humor. I realize that piece of foam core from Chaco Canyon isn't much to look at. But you're going to need it if you want to complete that key. Better check in back at the lab. In case Joanna has some new tasks for you. If you want to contact the dig in Copan, you've got to figure out the Nahuatl word for snake. See if any of your colleagues, I mean suspects, can help out. You made it all the way to the bottom of the temple and the Pakal carving wasn't there? It must be there. You'd better check again, Nan. Luckily, you can use your passport to go in the back way this time. You can use that foam core as a mold to make a piece in the exact shape of the North Key. There's some stuff in the lab called Instamold. Try that. Amnesia? Wow. Henrik must have taken a real nosedive off that pyramid. Do you think he just fell, Nancy? Or was he pushed? Sounds like you need to find out about hospital visiting hours. Yeah, but you'd better get the lowdown from Joanna first. George is right. She is your supervisor, after all. Call back soon. Yeah, and good luck. Call back soon. Yeah, and good luck. We're rooting for ya. Yeah, you're doing great. We'll be waiting for an update. Bye, Nancy. Watch, Watch out for stale, stale cookies. cookies. Bye. See ya. Hi, Nancy. It's Frank. Frank Hardy, what in the world are you doing in River Heights? Well, Joe and I just finished up a case out west, and we're taking a few days to drive back to Bayport. So we stopped in River Heights to say hello to our favorite girls. Well, that's awfully sweet of you. We should have known you'd be out there chasing trouble. Joe, is that you? The one and only. How's it going, Nancy? Oh, just knee-deep in another case. You know the feeling. Frank and Joe Hardy, taking the mist out of mystery. Joe here. That's pretty cute, Joe. Can you come up with a slogan for me, too? Hey, Nancy. Hold on while I put you on speakerphone. You still there? Yep. Hi, Nancy. You've got access to both of our brilliant minds now. <laughs> so how's the case coming along? This is Frank. Hey, Frank. It's Nancy. How's the road trip going? Well, Joe's driving at the moment, so I'm just jotting a few notes for my last will and testament. Very funny, Frank. So when are we going to team up on another case, Nancy? It's been a while. It would be fun, but let me get through this one first. What's the latest, Nancy? This is Joe. Hey, Joe, it's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. I've got that slogan for you. Are you ready? Of course. Nancy Drew, the ace in every case. Catchy. I'll make a real impression on my suspects with that line. How's the case going? This is Joe. Hey, Joe, it's Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Any leads? As usual, I've waded into a swamp of suspicious activity. Hi, this is Frank. Hi, Frank. Hey, Nancy. Uh, any news? Do we ever. There's one around every corner, isn't there? You can say that again. There's one around every corner, isn't there? All right, Joe. Cheeky as ever, I see. It's the secret of my irresistible charm. Oh, no, brother. Listen, Nancy, we're taking off again tomorrow. But if you want to talk shop about this case, why don't you give us a call on the car phone? The number is 973-555-3393. Sounds great. I'll do that. Oh, yeah? What's up? Why would he ask you to do that at a time like this? Well, supposedly, he just wants to make sure all of the activities can be successfully completed, so the temple exhibit is ready to open to the public. Hmm. So it's sort of like he's assigned you to do some fact-checking. Yeah, sort of. It could be a trap. Or maybe he's trying to lead you to some clues about the Pakal carving. Better check it out. Isn't that temple exhibit full of cool activities for kids? I bet it'll be a blast. As long as you don't get strung up by your toes. <laughs> Joe, does she need that? Does she? Hmm, well, we've certainly had plenty of brainwashing cases. Amnesia. Well, there was that one guy who'd forgotten his identity and was living in those caves. Remember, Frank? Right. That was a while back. Uh, why do you ask, Nancy? Well, Henrik Vanderhuhn. That's the epigrapher, right? Yes. He was translating the glyphs on the monolith until... Let me guess. He conked his head. Joe, will you let her finish? Joe's right. Severe head trauma, a concussion, and amnesia to boot. I've been visiting him in the hospital, and he says he's the one who took the Pakal carving. Case closed? Yeah, right, Joe. Is it ever that simple? My guess is that the stolen Pakal carving is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, well, that's what Henrik seems to think. He says he took the carving to protect it from the real thief. But the rest of the iceberg is floating around somewhere in the murky ocean of his memory, and I can't get to it. But most amnesia is temporary, isn't it? Apparently so, and I think I can help him recover the information I need. But the question is, Shouldn't I tell the police or Joanna or 
Franklin Rose that Henrik thinks he stole the Pakal? No way, Nancy. The closer you keep your cards, the better off you'll be. I agree. If Henrik's laid up in that hospital bed, the police will have plenty of time to arrest him, if it comes to that. In the meantime, Henrik is one of your biggest assets. Besides your own genius, of course. Cool! I bet it's a glow light stick. What's that? They use them in the military a lot, uh, during nighttime training exercises and stuff. They're more portable and less conspicuous than flashlights. What is it that makes it glow? Reconstituted swamp water and moon dust? Who knows? But hang on to it, Nancy. It might come in handy. Yeah, but remember, those things don't last forever, so use it wisely. Nancy Drew stumped? I find that hard to believe. What's the problem? Well, it seems like opening the tomb and breaking the curse are the same thing. Oh, sure, but how does a person pull that off? It has something to do with putting these six keys together. But there's this other part that says, When the first king, that's Bacall, ascends the throne again... I hate to say it, but isn't it a little late for that guy? I, I mean, hasn't it been like 1,500 years? You just don't jump back on the throne after a hiatus like that. You're being too literal, Joe. It must have something to do with a date, don't you think, Nancy? I mean, when did Pakal ascend the throne the first time around? I don't know off the top of my head, but the information must be in the museum somewhere. I'm gonna say June. Sometime in June. That's the traditional month for throne ascensions, isn't it? First of all, kid brother, June is the traditional month for weddings. And second, the date is not gonna be in our Gregorian calendar. It's going to be a date on the Maya calendar, which has a whole different structure. Frank, you are my number one favorite know-it-all. Well, ham radio is one of the tools of choice in the smuggling business. Nancy, I bet you'll get to talk to them on Morse code, too. Dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. It's like being a spy. And we all know the only thing better than being a detective is being a spy. Well, doing business with smugglers is not exactly my idea of fun. But I don't have much choice. What do you need from them? They've got one of the artifacts I need to solve this case. I'm going to use Henrik's code words to get them to send it to me. Cool. Have you talked to Joanna since the theft? Maybe she knows something about the police investigation. See what's new at the lab. So, the South Key belongs to Prudence Rutherford. That name sure sounds familiar. And that's saying something. I mean, how many Prudences do you run across in the average day? See if you can find any more information on her. Better gather all the evidence you can from the crime scene. Yeah, and see what your dear colleagues have to say about the Red Hand of Doom. Somebody's bound to break into a sweat. Don't you have some documents to borrow for Alejandro? The door's open, after all. Didn't Prudence mention some arts organizations in her interview? I wonder if any of them are affiliated with Beach Hill. Affiliated how, Joe? Oh, you know how those arts people like to stick together. If you want to track down the author of that red hand... You've got to figure out what it was printed with. You're not getting cold feet about your deal with Alejandro, are you? Donations to the museum must go through the board of directors in some way. See what Franklin Rose can tell you. You need to call the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Henrik must have the phone number somewhere. You're not quite done with your red hand analysis. You still need to look up the English for HGS. What's the holdup, Nancy? You've got smugglers to contact. Time to start looking for the North Key. The question is, where to start? Call Sheila Schultz back. See if she's come up with any bright ideas about the North Key. I wonder what Joanna will have to say about the results of your chemical analysis. If she's got anything to hide, a few innocent questions will really get under her skin. So Joanna claims the museum hasn't had any cinnabar on hand for a while, huh? You can verify that. That, if it's true, by going straight to the source. Time to give yourself a crash course in ham radio repair. Time to start looking for the West Key. The question is, where to start? What's with your lab partner in the disappearing act? Better check in at the lab. A key to the display cases would be helpful, wouldn't it? Poppy says you can take the carving as long as you put something organic in its place, right? Coming from the creator of Deadly Midnight Snack, that sounds like a pretty sweet compromise to me. Check out that bull game in the temple exhibit. And remember this strategy. When in doubt, grunt louder. Signature hearty wisdom, Nancy. Just for you. To contact the smugglers, you need to find the right channel on the radio. Henrik must have made a note of the channel somewhere. See if Joanna's back yet. You don't want to fall down on your curatorial duties. See if you can solve that logograph matchup activity in the temple exhibit. You've got the right radio channel. Now all you have to do is enter a few dots and dashes that spell out your Nahuatl word. There must be some sort of packing list to go with those crates you're supposed to unpack. You need to do a little logograph hunting. 
Check out the garden. The smugglers need a signal, a code word, to send off the west key. Don't forget to spell it out with dots and dashes. Joanna gave you the code to open the crate, right? Nothing personal, man, but what's the holdup? See what Joanna knows about Henrik's accident. Yeah, but if her head is popping off her shoulders, you have my permission to politely excuse yourself. See if the package from Prudence Rutherford has arrived yet. I don't know, Nancy. Seems like you could use a little information from the outside world. See what Franklin Rose has to say about Joanna's suspension. Has anything arrived from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center? Don't you want to get the scoop on Henrik? See if your package from Honduras has arrived. Use the foam core as a mold. You can make a piece in the exact shape of the North Key. Stop by the hospital. Maybe you can help orient Henrik to the reality of the Pakal theft. Looks like the smugglers have given you a little test before you can collect the goods. According to Maya custom, what would the most beautiful arrangement of those eyes be? Once you put all the individual keys... And copies of keys... Do you want to tell her, Joe? No, you can tell her. Once they're put together, you'll be able to open the monolith. You've got to get Henrik talking about Pakal. Find a picture that you can tack up on his memory board. Aren't you forgetting something? Before you can use the cube key, you need to pay homage to the first king by commemorating the date of his ascension to the throne. But first, you'll need to put a couple of calendar stones on those pegs. Aren't you curious to find out what secrets Henrik's key will unlock? Check in with Henrik at the hospital. See what happens when you insert the cube key. When you're on the west side, the west glyph should be facing out. Better study the information in Henrik's drawer a little more closely. The only way to the bottom of the temple exhibit is through the activities. Give Maya basketball a shot. Once you put the key in on the south side, the monolith will open. Hold on to your magnifying glass, Nancy. And be prepared for anything! Don't you want to see what's on Henrik's Z-Disc? It's not just his secret family stroganoff recipe, I can tell you that. Check out that maze puzzle in the temple. If you get stuck, you may need to refer back to the notes of a certain former Tempest. Is there some other visual clue that you can post on Henrik's memory board? Something that will get him reacquainted with his work? Nancy knows how to get through that maze, right, Joe? Right, Frank. As long as she stays right with it. Right. You're still working your way through those temple activities, aren't you? Detective work is all about multitasking, isn't it, Nancy? You're just one pop quiz away from level three of the temple. You must be super curious to find out what's on the next level in the temple. And hey, there's only one little pop quiz standing in your way. Work on that calendar activity in the bottom level of the temple. See if Henrik's made any headway on that riddle translation. You need to complete that God matchup activity in the bottom level of the temple. Henrik still hasn't remembered his password? You're just going to have to hope you run across that glyph somewhere else. Something tells me there's an inside joke in that last computer quiz. A little nonsense, courtesy of Sunny June? I wonder if any of your suspects can help. You've got to get a better idea of what this big plot is that Henrik suspects. Yeah, so far it's still not clear how stealing the Pakal carving was an act of heroism. You need to get your hands on that Pakal carving. What's the holdup, man? Anything interesting in Henrik's contacts list? Maybe you can enlist some long-distance assistance. Take the jade keys to your workstation in the lab. And see if they fit together. If I were you, I'd start brushing up on my Nahuatl. Now that you've found the Pakal carving, you might want to call Franklin Rose and see about clearing Joanna's name. You'd better explain that you can't give the carving back just yet, though. Ask old Alejandro a few more questions. He's bound to reveal something if you just keep him talking. You're not done tracking down keys yet. Time to get on the trail of the South Key. Go get him, Nancy. Good luck. Go get him, Nancy. Good luck. See ya! Let us know how it's going. See ya! Let us know how it's going. Later, Nancy. Bye. Later, Nancy. Bye. Later, Nancy. Bye. Be careful. Yeah, be extra careful. You've reached the law offices of Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. Please call back during regular business hours. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. How may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure, thank you. Have a great day. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. Nancy, great to hear from you. How's the internship treating you? Are Joanna and Henrik showing you the ropes? Glad to hear you're settling in. I'm off to a meeting, but feel free to call me if you have any questions. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, 
I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. Nancy, hello. Do you have any news? Oh, Nancy, you zero in on a case like a heat-seeking missile, don't you? I feel so much better knowing you're going to follow up on every lead. I'll help in any way I can. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Well, thank goodness I've got you on my side. I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Speaking of travel, I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. Good intentions are no substitute for integrity and sound judgment, Nancy. Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. It's not your job to defend her, Nancy. Even if she didn't steal the Pakal herself, how is it that she let this crime happen right under her nose? Did she want the insurance money? Is she mixed up with the black market? <sighs> Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. That's Shakespeare. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. She's not being punished, dear. In legal terms, we're suspending her in abundance of caution, so she won't do any more damage to Beach Hill's reputation or her own. Maybe not, but you are the best qualified detective I know. Which is just what we need right now. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? Nancy, how's your investigation coming along? That's great! So the case is closed. I'll reinstate Joanna as museum curator and we can get on with the business of launching this exhibit. Where in the world did you find it? Who's behind all this nonsense? What in the world are you talking about? What can I say, Nancy? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Do what you have to do, but let's get this mess cleaned up, all right? Indeed I did. Well, you're in luck. It so happens that Prudence and I sat on the panel of judges for the Kansas Speak No Evil Mime competition for three years in a row. Back when I lived in Wichita. How's that for a small world? I haven't talked to Prudence in about ten years. But let's see if I still have her in this old dinosaur of a Rolodex. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Got a pen? It's area code 785-555-7279. What's this all about? Ha! <laughs> You're a real pro, Nancy. Say... Why don't I call ahead and let Prudence know what's going on? That way I can say hello and she'll be expecting you. I'll call her right away. That's what I'm here for. Bye, kiddo. Not a problem, dear. Okay, it's time for some memory therapy. Nancy, could you come back tomorrow? Hippocrates once said, A wise man should consider that health is the greatest of human blessings and learn how, by his own thought, to derive benefit from his illnesses. This is Nurse Gordon Bluefoot. I'm either on another line or away from my desk. Please call back another time. This is Nurse Bluefoot. May I help you? Mm, patient information is confidential. Are you a family member? Mm, not at the moment. We're keeping him under close observation. Nancy Drew? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. We've been unable to locate any family members, and we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin 
Reality orientation. Henrik is suffering from an acute case of post-traumatic retrograde amnesia. At the moment, he is unable to recall even the most basic autobiographical facts, from his name and address to his birthday and shoe size. He can't access the details of his personal history or events leading up to his accident. Yes, the trauma being his accident at the museum, naturally. All reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted with the facts and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place where the memories are stored. First, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, like his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, the date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. A sensory memory is like it sounds, something that is familiar, that you recognize by sight or touch, smell or sound or... Oh, what is that last one? Oh, yes, taste. A cognitive memory is something that you know or remember intellectually. For example, how do you know the name of this planet? Somewhere along the way, you learn that it's called Earth, and you just remember. But say you bump your head and forget the name of this planet. You don't know where in the solar system you're floating. Exactly. But then I show you a picture of our marvelous blue and green globe. Suddenly you remember. That glorious sight is Earth. I live on the planet Earth. This is how a sensory memory can trigger a cognitive or intellectual one. You can't help Henrik remember his childhood, but you can probably help him remember his work, and who knows where that will take him. <laughs> All roads lead to Rome, as they say. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information and pictures for the patient to look at over a period of time. You may want to bring in images or photos to place on the board. Things from the museum, perhaps. Mm, not at the moment. We're keeping him under close observation. Well, we wake him up every half hour to make sure he doesn't slip into a coma, and we watch for any signs that would indicate increased pressure in the brain. Dilated or pinpoint pupils vomiting, severe headaches, and or seizures are some of the common symptoms that may indicate swelling in the brain. Anyway, once he's out of the danger zone, we'll move him over to neurology. Will do. Visiting hours are 10 to 4 every day. If the patient is not engaged in treatment and if he seems stable, just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. He may have attention difficulties, headaches, uh, anxiety. Sometimes he may seem giddy, too. We need to keep these conditions in check. Don't push him too hard, or he may have some kind of meltdown. Exactly. Well, do you have a picture of the artifact that you can bring in? That might trigger his memory. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik van der Heun. I believe you're a colleague of his? Since Mr. van der Heun was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Thank you. Be well. Peace. Bye-bye. You look familiar. Is it time for my snack? Well, look who it is. Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. Good afternoon, young lady. Johanna Riggs, is that the woman who called to pick my brain for an access code? Where in my poor banged-up head would I be keeping access codes? I don't...
even remember my own birthday. So if you're here to squeeze me for details, you're wasting your time. How, pray tell, do you intend to do that? Pictures? Well, isn't this nice? Fine, I'll do it. I know what they mean, dear. I wrote them. Your translator is sloppy. I should know. I am the author of the original work. At first, Glyph is the fool, not the magician. Furthermore, any decent epigrapher knows those glyphs refer to the infamous plague of oozing hives. A fitting curse for a fool, don't you think? I rather like it. Who in the world is Pakal? Oh, my head. Oh, the pressure. I can't take any more today, Nancy. Nurse Bluefoot! Gordon! I need peace! That face. He's as familiar as my own feet. Pakal! Nancy, this is the stolen carving, isn't it? And I'm the one who took it! I must have. But why? Oh, Pakal! What could I have meant by this? It's still in the museum. To protect him. I had to protect him. Oh, Pakal! Something is going on at that museum. A devious plot. I was the only one who could stand in the way. Forgive me, Nancy, but when I woke up in this hospital bed, I didn't even know my own name. Perhaps the only thing I can offer you is this key. It was found in one of my pockets when I was brought in. I haven't a clue. Take the key now, Nancy. Find out what it opens and return to me, please, with some answers. In the meantime, I'll sit with my friend, Pakal, and see if he will tell me anything new. I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. This has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. It's a tomb. Pakal called it a prison because it was designed to prevent the Whisperer's soul from entering the underworld. The Whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name. But I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. From the age of twelve, when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic king of the Maya. Then, the Whisperer came along and wrote that Pakal was only king because his mother pulled some strings. It was quite a blow to Pakal's image. Pakal swore that the Whisperer's words would never see the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings all in a tomb and locked it up tight. That's the idea. Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. Sinclair, Sinclair. He was a little portly, always bargaining. Terrible Spanish, a real loudmouth. Hmm, I wonder whatever happened to that guy. I have many contacts off the beaten path, so to speak, and ham radios are extremely portable. Ham radio conversations are also much more difficult to trace, so they're good for conducting business off the record. The Maya took great care to prepare a body for the journey to the afterlife. Jade was a valuable stone, so they put a bead in the mouth to ensure that the dead would have some currency. You know, it's always good to carry a few bucks when you're going on a long trip. And another thing, you'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sonny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of, but Sonny was petrified of the Coatamundi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. The tomb! Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Huh. Now how did I think of that? Six keys? Six keys? Six keys! Nancy, what are the four corners of the world? North, south, east, and west. Plus the first king, Pakal himself, and the Copan fool. When they're all assembled, they open the tomb. Don't you see? This is why I stole the Pakal. To prevent some other schemer from putting the key together. I'll do my best. Now then, Nancy, you're coming on board at a critical time for Beach Hill. An exhibit of this caliber is not kid stuff. Franklin Rose assures me you're a real trooper. And I hope he's right, because I'm not here to babysit. I don't care who your father is. How are the tasks coming along? Someone has cooked up my worst nightmare and served it to me on a plate. First the Pakal carving is stolen and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name? What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith? The board clams up on my funding? My mother posts my old prom pictures on the internet? Thanks for clearing my name, Nancy. 
Honestly, I mean, what kind of moron would I be to try and ruin my own exhibit? Anyway, we need to make up for lost time. I need you to go to the storeroom and start unpacking some of those crates. One of the pieces has a fancy security device on it. The code is 0677. In addition to our permanent collection, we're borrowing rare pieces from museums and private collectors around the world. Soon we'll be sitting on the most fabulous collection of Maya artifacts ever assembled in one place. And now that we've scored the monolith, too, be chill, sera numero uno. Yes, a hot young team of archaeologists, Americans and Mexicans both, dug it out of a cave near Palenque. Every curator from here to Siberia was trying to get a hold of it, but I'm the one who closed the deal. It's a massive pillar of stone, nearly 1,500 years old, with Maya glyphs carved into it. We've installed it in the garden. Wait until you see it. According to Henrik, the monolith was made at the special request of King Pakal himself, but we don't know what its purpose was. Besides Henrik and me, the only people who will be around to pester you are Taylor Sinclair, my ace art dealer, and Alejandro Del Rio, attaché to the Mexican consulate and executive thorn in my side. A glyph, as in hieroglyphic, is a picture that represents a word or an idea. Henrik is the human encyclopedia on the subject. Henrik van der Heun, world-renowned expert in Maya hieroglyphics, He's the latest addition to the Beach Hill Brain Trust. I told him I don't even want to see his pointy vander head till he's got a translation on that monolith. I'll tell you about Sonny some other time. Well, don't mind if I'm a little snippy. It's just that the last deputy curator was like a tempest in a teapot around here. Caused me nothing but grief. The last deputy curator was like a tempest in a teapot around here. Caused me nothing but grief. There's a list of tasks for you in the lab. Once you've knocked those off, we'll regroup. Because in archaeology, everyone wants to be king of the sandbox, we've had to make some, uh, budget cutbacks, so we'll be relying heavily on our volunteer staff. Namely, you. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be in the swing of things soon enough. Go ahead and take a look around the museum. I'm sure you'll find the monolith, Mui and Terrasante. Or just roll up your sleeves and hit the lab. The Maya were at their peak during Pakal's reign. After he died, things began to go downhill. The civilization never regained the oomph it had under its most extraordinary king. If the message on that monolith is from King Pakal himself, it might give us a clue. Credit for a discovery like that can only spell one thing, my dear. R-E-V-E-N-U-E. -E. No, 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 no. We could barely afford the price of the loan, for one thing. And besides, nowadays, it's not even legal to sell artifacts out of the country of their origin. Ugh, wouldn't you rather hear about the monolith? That's the understatement of the year. The police took some samples for the crime lab, but they couldn't promise any overnight results. So if you want to put your little magnifying glass up to the scene, it's fine with me. Right now, my priority is to get a move on this insurance claim. What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. Henrik can help you with that. Check with Henrik on that. I became a curator because I want to help make artifacts available to as many people as possible. That's all that matters, isn't it? Unless you're Alejandro Del Rio. What am I, fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. The police showed me the note. It said, the magician suffers yellow death. Whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. Check with Sinclair. Sure, sure, Cinnabar. The Maya would rub it into their most important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. We use Cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. There's a surprise at the bottom. The kids will love it and learn a lot. We're planning to have a guided tour when the museum is fully staffed, that is. Well, get cracking. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? I got an email from him one day saying he heard the news about Beach Hill getting the monolith. 
He said he'd drop everything to come here and translate those glyphs. He was even willing to take a pay cut. What could I say except giddy up? You're hired at the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New Mexico. Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. Carpe diem. Semper ubi sabubi. See you around. Keep it real. Max speaking. Mercuric sulfide? Oh, we sure do. How much do you need? Uh, first things first. What accounts this for? Well, hello there, Beach Hill. Hey, you're not Sunny June. Whatever happened to that guy? I suppose he caught a ride on a flying saucer, eh? <laughs> what a riot. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, you don't need to reorder, do you? Unless you ate last week's shipment for breakfast, that is. Oh, that's what it says here. Well, the initials on the order are J.R. Uh, oh? Oops, I guess we didn't ship it at all. It looks like the package was picked up here at the warehouse. Hmm. Ah, I sure can't. Guess I must have been at lunch or something. Sure thing. I hope there wasn't any problem with the stuff, was there? We only used a top-grade mercuric sulfide. Hold up. Oh, I don't know where you heard that. We've got enough mercuric sulfide in-house to sink a ship. Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, looks like I've got another call coming in here. You give us a call in about four months or so when you start to run out, okie doke? And don't forget to... Keep it real. Well, you sound a little green in the chemicals department, if you don't mind my saying so. I hope you know that mercuric sulfide is highly toxic. Makes you crazy. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew, the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill. Buenos dias. Me llamo Nancy Drew. I have some paperwork for you regarding the loan of the Palenque monolith to Beach Hill. Here's your file. As requested. Promise me that you'll take good care of these documents. I beg your pardon, but how does a deputy curator become a pirate in your book? Conquistadors? Alejandro, I understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration, but that was hundreds of years ago. What does this have to do with Beach Hill? Do you blame Joanna and modern-day art collectors for something that happened long before they were born? But Joanna only wants to display this artwork, to celebrate it so the public will be able to enjoy it and learn about your people's great talents and achievements. What do you mean by questionable provenance? Is there any way to identify the stolen artifacts? So the problem has been remedied, hasn't it? Then the relics at Beach Hill must all be legitimate, right? Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? And to you, these people are no better than pirates, is that right? And what if these measures are not taken? Well, I think I'll have to chew on some of these issues for a while, Alejandro. In the meantime, I do need you to sign off on these changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. Do you mind? I see. Well, I should probably get going. Here are the changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. I just need your signature, please. I admire your conviction, Alejandro. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Palenque monolith is only here on loan from Mexico. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. Actually, Alejandro, I think I'm supposed to take them back to Joanna myself. Well, uh, okay then. A deal's a deal. I trust your Nahuatl has become fluent again. Muchas gracias. Gotta go. Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Do you know much about Maya glyphs? Have you heard? The Pakal carving was stolen from the museum. You don't sound very concerned about all of this. So you were in the museum at the time? Henrik called you? When? Where was he? I've been looking for him. Did you see anything suspicious? And you didn't stop to see what was going on? I'll need to alert the police so they can ask you some questions. It's odd that I didn't see you. Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? Well, that's very big of you. Joanna is beside herself over the loss, you know. Joanna is beside herself over the loss, you know. What about the Bacall carving? Wouldn't you rather see it in a case at Beach Hill than lost forever? You are awfully unforgiving, aren't you? Have you heard? The police received an anonymous tip, and they're considering Joanna a prime suspect in the Bacall theft. They've taken her in for questioning. How did she jeopardize museum finances? How do you know about museum finances? I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. 
Can you help me? Uh, I'd rather not say. It's part of my investigation. Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. What are you talking about, Alejandro? Something tells me this translation is going to come with strings attached. What makes you think they were falsified? First, you tell me you were unconcerned about the theft of the Pakal carving, and now you have an urgent need to see the provenance documents? Is it just me, or is this a little suspicious? It wouldn't be right for me to go behind Joanna's back like that. Ah, uh, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. Okay, Alejandro, I'll see what I can do. Have you heard? Henrik Vanderhune fell off the pyramid at the museum. He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. Do you consider Henrik a conquistador? Along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Do you know what cinnabar is? Cinnabar was used to make the red handprint that was left at the scene of the Pakal theft. They do use it at the museum, but Joanna told me they haven't been able to get any in a while. I think Joanna may have been less than truthful with me. Joanna said the museum didn't have any, but the supplier said she ordered some last week. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Earlier, you said that some artifacts have questionable provenance. What does that mean? I should get back to the museum. I am Lord Pakal, ruler of the mighty kingdom of Palenque. All those who come before me witness my power. Lord Pakal is considered the most influential ruler of the Maya civilization. Cultural, scientific, and military achievement flourished under his reign. As with all Maya kings, very little is known about his personal life, since all written inscriptions dealt solely with public achievements such as wars, battles, coronations, births, marriages, and deaths. The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Players would propel a rubber ball through a small stone hoop using their thighs, hips, and forearms. It is believed that the players were often sacrificed after a game. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls were employed for this activity. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shib Chak, and the baby jaguar. The Maya were particularly fascinated with twins, and many of the Maya gods were paired together. The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day, and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress independently of each other. Strange, supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, sometimes called the celestial or cosmic monster, may have represented the sunrise or a long journey. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed down from father to son, but Lady Zack Cook broke this custom by establishing herself as a deity. This gave her the power to justify the new royal lineage. Because his mother had been deified, Pakal often referred to himself as the first true king. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over childbirth and basket weaving. Ahau Kin represented the sun. Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was either dedicated to or used to supplicate the god of war, Balak. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. 
HAM is an acronym for Handheld Amateur Radio. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon and as far north as North America. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. Although there are thousands of inscriptions found on artifacts and architecture, there are only a handful of Maya books in existence today. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew, the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill. Buenos dias. Me llamo Nancy Drew. I have some paperwork for you regarding the loan of the Palenque monolith to Beach Hill. Here's your file. As requested. Promise me that you'll take good care of these documents. I beg your pardon, but how does a deputy curator become a pirate in your book? Conquistadors? Alejandro, I understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration, but that was hundreds of years ago. What does this have to do with Beach Hill? Do you blame Joanna and modern-day art collectors for something that happened long before they were born? But Joanna only wants to display this artwork, to celebrate it so the public will be able to enjoy it and learn about your people's great talents and achievements. What do you mean by questionable provenance? Is there any way to identify the stolen artifacts? So the problem has been remedied, hasn't it? Then the relics at Beach Hill must all be legitimate, right? Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? And to you, these people are no better than pirates, is that right? And what if these measures are not taken? Well, I think I'll have to chew on some of these issues for a while, Alejandro. In the meantime, I do need you to sign off on these changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. Do you mind? I see. Well, I should probably get going. Here are the changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. I just need your signature, please. I admire your conviction, Alejandro. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Palenque monolith is only here on loan from Mexico. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. Actually, Alejandro, I think I'm supposed to take them back to Joanna myself. Well, uh, okay then. A deal's a deal. I trust your Nahuatl has become fluent again. Muchas gracias. Gotta go. Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Do you know much about Maya glyphs? Have you heard? The Pakal carving was stolen from the museum. You don't sound very concerned about all of this. So you were in the museum at the time? Henrik called you? When? Where was he? I've been looking for him. Did you see anything suspicious? And you didn't stop to see what was going on? I'll need to alert the police so they can ask you some questions. It's odd that I didn't see you. Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? Well, that's very big of you. Joanna is beside herself over the loss, you know. Joanna is beside herself over the loss, you know. What about the Bacall carving? Wouldn't you rather see it in a case at Beach Hill than lost forever? You are awfully unforgiving, aren't you? Have you heard? The police received an anonymous tip, and they're considering Joanna a prime suspect in the Bacall theft. They've taken her in for questioning. How did she jeopardize museum finances? How do you know about museum finances? I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Can you help me? Uh, I'd rather not say. It's part of my investigation. Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. What are you talking about, Alejandro? Something tells me this translation is going to come with strings attached. What makes you think they were falsified? First you tell me you are unconcerned about the theft of the Pakal carving, and now you have an urgent need to see the provenance documents? Is it just me, or is this a little suspicious? It wouldn't be right for me to go behind Joanna's back like that. Ah, uh, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. Okay, Alejandro, I'll see what I can do. Have you heard? Henrik Vanderhoon fell off the pyramid at the museum. 
He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. Do you consider Henrik a conquistador? Along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Do you know what cinnabar is? Cinnabar was used to make the red handprint that was left at the scene of the Pakal theft. They do use it at the museum, but Joanna told me they haven't been able to get any in a while. I think Joanna may have been less than truthful with me. Joanna said the museum didn't have any but the supplier said she ordered some last week. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Earlier, you said that some artifacts have questionable provenance. What does that mean? I should get back to the museum. I am Lord Pakal, ruler of the mighty kingdom of Palenque. All those who come before me witness my power. Lord Pakal is considered the most influential ruler of the Maya civilization. Cultural, scientific, and military achievement flourished under his reign. As with all Maya kings, very little is known about his personal life, since all written inscriptions dealt solely with public achievements such as wars, battles, coronations, births, marriages, and deaths. The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Players would propel a rubber ball through a small stone hoop using their thighs, hips, and forearms. It is believed that the players were often sacrificed after a game. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls were employed for this activity. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shib Chak, and the baby jaguar. The Maya were particularly fascinated with twins, and many of the Maya gods were paired together. The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day, and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress independently of each other. Strange, supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, sometimes called the celestial or cosmic monster, may have represented the sunrise or a long journey. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed down from father to son, but Lady Zack Cook broke this custom by establishing herself as a deity. This gave her the power to justify the new royal lineage. Because his mother had been deified, Pakal often referred to himself as the first true king. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over childbirth and basket weaving. Ahau Kin represented the sun. Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was either dedicated to or used to supplicate the god of war, Balak. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ham is an acronym for handheld amateur radio. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon and as far north as North America. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. 
Although there are thousands of inscriptions found on artifacts and architecture, there are only a handful of Maya books in existence today. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. I don't know what to make of Alejandro del Rio, the attaché to the Mexican consulate. Taylor Sinclair, the art dealer, seems like quite a character. So, I met Taylor Sinclair at his office. Have you seen anything in the papers about Beach Hill getting the deal with Mexico to display the Palenque monolith? Ever since the theft, I haven't been able to find Henrik anywhere. Taylor Sinclair and Alejandro Del Rio have both earned a place on my suspect list. Somehow, Joanna has gotten the museum into some financial hot water. I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake, and Alejandro may be the only one who can help me. Why would the thief keep leaving that awful red handprint at every crime scene? After the board caught wind about the police interrogating Joanna, they suspended her. I think I've tracked down the North Key. Would you believe Poppy Dada stuck it in one of her paintings? One of the Maya customs was to bury the dead with possessions and things they would need for the journey to the afterlife. Detective Drew, requesting hint, please. I'll talk to you later, ladies. Nurse Bluefoot, this is Nancy Drew. You left me a message regarding Henrik Vanderhune. How is he? I'm calling in regard to a recently admitted patient. Uh, Henrik Vanderhune? Hi, Nurse Bluefoot. It's Nancy Drew. I need to talk to Henrik about a certain artifact that was stolen from the museum, but he can't remember it. Sorry, Nurse Bluefoot. Uh, it's Nancy. I think I dialed your number by accident. No, I'm a colleague of Henrik's. Nancy Drew is my name. I'm sorry. This is Nancy Drew. You left me a message? What's reality orientation? Can you explain the amnesia? Has he lost his memory for good? Is there any way to treat amnesia? Post-traumatic? I see. So we need to help him find the trail of crumbs. Is that it? So how does he regain access to the storage place? What are sensory memories? What are cognitive memories? Where do I come in? That would be most unfortunate. Yikes! I still don't understand where I come in. What if the patient doesn't remember right away? I see. Well, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. When are visiting hours? Is Henrik awake right now? Close observation. What does that mean? When do you think he'll be out of intensive care? I see. Well, when are visiting hours? What kind of signs? Increased pressure in the brain? When do you think he'll be out of intensive care? This has been most informative, Nurse Bluefoot. Please tell Henrik he'll have a visitor very soon. Thanks for the crash course in head trauma, Nurse Bluefoot. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No pun intended. Uh, when are visiting hours? Great. Uh, is there anything else? Stable how? Thanks for the warning, Nurse Bluefoot. Well, the last thing we want is a meltdown. I'll go easy on him. I'll see what I can come up with. Talk to you later. Good idea. Thanks, Nurse Bluefoot. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I understand you had some rare Maya artifacts stolen recently. Beach Hill was robbed, too. We lost one of our prized jade carvings. I'm wondering if the robberies are connected. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident at Chaco Canyon? I heard the thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. Is that true? What types of artifacts did the thief get away with? Do you know of any symbolic meaning attached to a red hand? So, the thief cleaned out an entire display case? Do you have a list of the stolen pieces? I'm interested in the jade carving. What did it look like? Which piece would you say is the greatest loss for the center? Do you know that Henrik Vanderhoon works for Beach Hill now? Why didn't you mention the connection when I told you I was from Beach Hill. Was Henrik still working at Chaco Canyon when the theft occurred? Was Henrik on good terms with Chaco Canyon when he left? Do you recall having some appraisal work done by an art dealer by the name of Taylor Sinclair? Could you send me a photo of that jade carving so I can take a look at the glyph? I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? That just might work. At this point, I'm ready to try anything. Sure thing. Thanks a million, Sheila. Dear Dad, Greetings from the new deputy curator at Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I miss you, by the way. How's Africa? I sure hope this letter reaches you in Ouagadougou before you move on to Nairobi. So I got the internship. Your old friend Franklin Rose was awfully nice to submit my name to the rest of the members of the museum's board of directors. What an opportunity while I'm in between cases. As you probably know, the museum specializes in ancient Maya culture. 
My supervisor is going to be Joanna Riggs, a well-known archaeologist. Maybe you've seen her name in the news recently, in conjunction with the discovery of a strange Maya monolith. Apparently, it's created quite a buzz among experts in the field. Well, Beach Hill plans to feature the monolith in an upcoming exhibition. Just imagine, this artifact has been buried for hundreds of years, and now it's going to be unveiled to the public for the first time. The museum is short-staffed at the moment, and they're expecting such a huge turnout that they've closed their doors to prepare. I can hardly wait to dig into this exciting project and learn how archaeologists and historians solve the mysteries of ancient cultures. I'll keep you posted. Love, Nancy. Dear Dad, it was great to talk to you on the phone last night. I can't wait to see you back in River Heights where I can fill you in on the whole story. Can you believe that your own daughter was recently standing face to face with a real mummy? Now that the scribe's book has been recovered, I understand how important it is and why Taylor thought he could make a fortune selling it on the black market. The book contains one of the only personal accounts of Maya life and existence anywhere. I'm sure it'll be a tremendous addition to our knowledge of the Maya, once it's translated, that is. And now that Henrik's memory is back up to speed again, I'm sure he'll be itching to get to work on it. Taylor Sinclair won't be making any art deals for a long time, though, that's for sure. I guess I shouldn't be surprised about Alejandro's discovery that the Pakal Carving's provenance documents were faked after all. When Franklin Rose and the board found out, they arranged to return the artifact to Mexico right away. Mexican officials are so happy to have the artifact back, they have pledged a new era of diplomatic relations with Beach Hill. Joanna sure learned her lesson about making deals with shady operators like Taylor. The board has agreed to give her another chance, as long as she reforms her business tactics. And what else? Oh yes, Poppy Dada's announced a new direction in her artwork. All her new paintings are going to feature, what else, mysterious red handprints. So I guess everyone is taking off in new directions now. I'm going to stay and help this exhibit get launched. But I'll see you back at home in a couple of weeks. Have a safe trip home. Love, Nancy. Who is King Pakal? Is that Jade? How did the museum acquire it? Taylor Sinclair! I'm sure she would say the same about you. What's that? Thievery and corruption? Why are you doing this? I beg your pardon? Help me out, Sinclair. I'm drawing a blank. This tomb and all of its contents belong to Mexico. You have no right to do this. The book is not yours to sell. But it doesn't belong to you. It's groovy. A forward arrow allows you to advance in the direction you want to go. Likewise, a back arrow allows you to take a step back. Sometimes up and down arrows will be available too. Since the theft, Henrik is nowhere to be found. But he left me this note asking me to try out all of the activities in the temple exhibit. Have you guys ever dealt with an amnesia case before? When I finished all the puzzles in the temple, I got this glowy green stick as a prize. I'm sort of stumped by the riddle that Henrik translated from the monolith. I need to contact people at a dig in Honduras by ham radio. I think they might be smugglers. This investigation is stalling. Any thoughts on how to get it back in gear? Talk to you later, fellas. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? This is Nancy Drew. This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. Sure, thank you. So far, so good, I think. There's a lot of work to do before we launch this exhibit. But somehow, we'll pull it off. I've got a lot to learn about the Maya. But Joanna and Henrik seem very knowledgeable. Beach Hill's an amazing place. And after that kidnapping case at the Royal Palladium, the mysteries of the ancient Maya are just my speed. I'm sure everything's going to be smooth sailing, Mr. Rose. Not really. But something tells me this case is going to get complicated. The thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. 
According to Taylor Sinclair, the same print was left at a couple of other crime scenes recently. I'm trying to find out what the connection is between these thefts. The thief left a message in glyphs. According to Joanna, the translation is, The magician suffers yellow death. What in the world could that mean? Nothing definitive yet, but I'm beginning to identify my suspects. Oh, really? Why? As a matter of fact, I have been brushing up on my mind reading. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery-free zone, Mr. Rose. Don't worry, I'm used to it by now. And after all, this situation is no more treacherous than my recent attempt at a ski vacation in Wisconsin. Anyway, about Beach Hill, like father, like daughter... Anyway, Mr. Rose, I'm calling about Joanna. Yes, the last I heard, he was going on to Kenya to try to pick up a safari. Anyway, what's on your mind, Mr. Rose? Don't you believe she's genuinely concerned about the welfare of the museum? But with Henrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? I know you're upset, but the Pakal theft is not what it seems. I have reason to believe that there's another explanation. Whatever she's done, I still think we need Joanna at the museum. But Mr. Rose, I don't think Joanna is responsible for the Pakal theft. She shouldn't be punished. Oh, Mr. Rose, I'm not qualified to be a curator. I don't have the experience. What do you want me to do? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. I'm making good progress, and the Pakal carving is safe and sound. But I'm afraid I can't tell you everything yet. I've recovered the Pakal carving. Mr. Rose, this case is far from closed. Do you trust me? I'm afraid I can't give the carving back yet. Not if I'm going to catch this thief. I'm sorry, but I can't explain everything now. I'll take good care of the carving, I promise. I need to contact a woman named Prudence Rutherford. I noticed she's on the board of the Topeka Commission for the Arts and that they've donated money to Beach Hill. Any idea how I might track her down? You judged a mime competition? Dad never told me you lived in Wichita. I think Ms. Rutherford had a run-in with a red-handed thief, much like the one who took the Pakal carving. Ms. Rutherford had a necklace with a Maya artifact stolen right out of her home. I'm trying to see if there's any connection between these robberies. That would be great, Mr. Rose. Now I think you're reading my mind, Mr. Rose. Thanks. So you'll call Joanna and invite her back to work? Thanks, Mr. Rose. Hi, may I speak to Henry Daddle, please? Mr. Daddle, my name is Nancy Drew. This is a long shot, but I'm calling regarding a Maya artifact that was bought at auction in 1898 by one Henry Albert Daddle. Does that ring any bells? Yes, exactly. Wow, I can't believe my luck. I'm wondering if the artifact is still in the family. I'm investigating a recent rash of thefts around the country involving similar Maya artifacts. Any information you could give me about the one your great-grandfather bought would be very helpful. I'm the deputy curator at Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm doing some research on jade carvings of the ancient Maya. I'm a detective investigating the recent theft of another Maya jade carving at Beach Hill. Will do. Thanks, Mr. Daddle. Hi, Henrik. I'm Nancy. We met at Beach Hill before your head injury. Henrik, it's me, Nancy. You're looking very well. I'm here to help with your memory exercises so you can come back to Beach Hill as soon as possible. Ready to do some memory work, Henrik? I brought you a picture. Hi, Henrik. I've come to talk Maya kings. Let's see if this photo rings any bells. You recognize the riddle then? What have you remembered? You're looking well, Henrik. Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. The curator's name is Joanna Riggs. You were working there, and that's where your accident happened. Do you remember anything about the accident? Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. Before your accident, you were working there on some important Maya glyph translations. Do you remember anything about that project? Joanna called? What did you tell her? What access code would that be? Actually, Nurse Bluefoot thinks with regular visits, I may be able to help you get your memory back more quickly. According to Nurse Bluefoot, you haven't lost any data. Your brain just doesn't know how to locate certain things at the moment. We need to give it some clues. I'll visit. We'll talk. Sometimes I'll bring you pictures. Nurse Bluefoot says that visual aids often help to trigger memories. Come on, Henrik. You'll feel much better once things start coming back to you. I've got a picture with me if you'd like to give it a try. Think of it this way. You just got back from a fabulous trip, only you can't remember the places you went. So you decide to look through postcards to see which ones you recognize. Great. These are Maya glyphs, like the ones you used to translate. Now, don't be upset if you don't know how to read them anymore. I can tell you what they mean. Okay, here we go. 
These symbols mean the magician suffers yellow death. I'm sure you have written them at one time or another in your career. So what do you think this is all about? The magician suffers yellow death. Take it easy, Henrik. I know you're well-renowned in your field. You don't need to prove anything. The magician suffers yellow death. Do you think that's a curse? The author... What are you talking about? You don't agree with the translation? Henrik, this note was found at a crime scene. Are you telling me you left it there? If you wrote this note, then you must have stolen the carving of King Pakal. Did you? I'm investigating the theft of the Pakal carving. Please, Henrik, try to remember something. The Pakal carving is priceless and irreplaceable. If you stole it, this is your opportunity to come clean and return it to the museum. Do you know his name? Can you remember the last time you saw him? If you're remembering correctly, this is a serious crime, Henrik. You've got to tell me why you did it. Think, Henrik. Where's the carving now? Easy, Henrik. The answers are in your head. You just need to find them. All I need is some idea of where to look next. I'll take any scrap of memory you've got, Henrik. Why would you break into the display case and steal the carving only to leave it in the museum? Are you sure, Henrik? Did you plan to sell the Pakal on the black market? What kind of plot? Whose plot is this? Is it someone who's involved with the museum? Where in the museum did you hide the Pakal? Do you know what lock it belongs to? Maybe that key goes to the lock where you hid the Pakal. You can count on me, Henrik. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. Who is this whisperer of silent secrets? What is the prison of stone? That's kind of creepy. Why did Pakal want to imprison the whisperer's soul? What did the scribe say? That Pakal had bad fashion? How did Pakal wish to be depicted? So he put her in in a stone prison? What happened to the scribe's writings? Wait, Henrik, a prison of stone? We're not talking about the monolith, are we? Does this mean that the monolith is hollow inside and, and full of bones? Does anyone else know about this? Do you think the monolith can be opened? Do you think there is anyone I can trust? This is important information, Henrik. Don't you think the police should be informed? I saw in your notes that you traveled in Central America with someone called Big Bunny. That wasn't Taylor Sinclair, was it? I noticed you have a lot of contact information on your Z-Disc. Why do you need to contact people by ham radio? What was the Maya custom of putting jade in the mouth of a dead person all about? This is a long shot, but do you know what animal Pakal was afraid of? Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan fool key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? According to your notes, Pakal made a six-part key to the Whisperer's tomb and scattered the pieces around the world. Do you remember anything about this? Do you think I should alert the police? Maybe I'd better tell Joanna what's going on. Do you know anything about the theft of Prudence Rutherford's necklace? One of the pieces that was stolen from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center was a jade carving with an unusual glyph on it. Do you remember translating it? If you're not the real thief, why did you leave the red handprint when you took the Pakal carving? Were you trying to send some sort of signal to the real thief? Were you copycatting the thief's trademark to make the Pakal theft look like part of the devious plot, as you called it? What does the red handprint mean? Did you use Joanna's name last week to place an order for Cinnabar with Keep It Real Restoration? Do you have anything against Joanna? You wouldn't try to frame her, would you? Do you think Joanna is behind the other thefts? I don't suppose you have a Nahuatl word for snake floating around in your memory bank somewhere, do you? Have you ever been part of a smuggling racket? You rest up. I'll be back. Pleased to meet you. What are you working on? That's right. I'm Nancy. Joanna tells me you're translating the glyphs on the Palenque monolith. No, I was hoping you could tell me. Something like, don't play ball in the house? Why are you wearing that mask? Hmm? Huh? Housekeeping? How's the translation coming along? You've got my undivided attention. In the words of Nicholas Falcone, come on, spill it. Do you know any of the archaeologists there? Why is it so important? There was a theft recently at the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New Mexico. 
Isn't that the museum where you used to work? Were you familiar with the pieces that were stolen? Why did you leave the job at Chaco Canyon? I'm not sure what to do with those shards of pottery Joanna left for me. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. I'm not sure how to go about rearranging those exhibit narrations. Could you explain what I'm supposed to do with that Maya logograph numbering exhibit? Did you know the deputy curator who is here before me? I'm supposed to order order more packing supplies, but the company says they won't do business with us anymore. Does Beach Hill have bills it can't pay? But Henrik, how am I supposed to get this order taken care of? But Henrik, what will we do when we run out of packing supplies? I found an old diskette of Sonny's, and I'm hoping it might have some helpful information on it. Do you have any idea what password he used around here? How's the monolith translation going? I'm curious about your work. How do you go about translating a glyph anyway? So there isn't a definitive dictionary of Maya glyphs where you can look things up? Can I give that ham radio a try? What is the Spectro X Archeo Analyzer for? Joanna turned me loose without too many instructions. Do you have any advice for me? See you around, Henrik. Something's missing here. I need a disc. I'm glad to be here. Please, tell me more about the exhibit. If there's one thing I've learned from my father, it's the value of hard work. Just tell me where to start. I haven't seen the list yet. Actually, I haven't started them. I'm sorry about the theft, Joanna. It must be a terrible loss for the museum. I'd like to have a look at the crime scene myself. Did the police turn up any clues? Take it easy, Joanna. I'm sure everything is going to be okay. We do seem to be on shaky footing, don't we? Sure thing, Joanna. I'll see you later. Was the monolith excavated in Mexico? This monolith... It's an important discovery. What does this monolith look like? Why do you mention the nationalities of the archaeologists? Did Beach Hill buy it? Could you explain what a glyph is? How do you know it's 1,500 years old? What purpose did the monolith serve? Who's Henrik? Are glyphs a kind of writing? Tell me more about Alejandro Del Rio. Tell me more about the exhibit. How many glyphs are there in all? How do you translate them? Pointy Vanderhead? Pointy Vanderhead? Where was he working before? Do you think the glyphs hold an important message? Guess I'd better get going. Don't worry, Joanna. It's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. Now I've got work to do. Who was this so-called tempest? What kind of grief? Where's the rest of the staff around here? Before I dig in, can you tell me about the exhibit we're gearing up for? Shouldn't I have more training? Who's Alejandro Del Rio? Before I dig in, can you tell me about the exhibit we're gearing up for? What exactly is a monolith anyway? Thanks for the orientation, Joanna. I'll talk to you later. Any last advice before I get down to business? What was the key to Pakal's success? Do you think the glyphs were intended to be a message to future generations of Maya? Is a monolith anything like a monument? Did the police find any clues around the a display case? I don't know if Franklin Rose mentioned this, but I do have some experience with detective work. Do you mind if I check out the crime scene? Great. I'll let you know if I find anything. What were their initial findings? I'll call right away. How can I help around here? There was a message for me from Nurse Bluefoot at the hospital. I'll call him back right away. I spoke to Nurse Bluefoot at the hospital, and I promised I would visit Henrik right away. Henrik? Is he on staff here at the museum? I'm not sure what to do with those shards of pottery in the lab. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. I can't seem to find the addendum to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. I'm not sure what to do with those exhibit narrations. Can you explain how you want me to reorder that Maya numbering exhibit? Why did you become a museum curator. Have you seen Henrik? I found a piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. Sorry, Joanna. I thought I was supposed to go to Henrik with all my glyph questions. Okay, great. Did you happen to see the thief's message? I need to show Henrik a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? I did the chemical analysis you suggested. That red hand was printed with a compound containing mercury and sulfur. Does that mean anything to you? Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? Does the museum keep cinnabar around? What's that big temple exhibit all about? What kind of surprise? I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. 
Does it have any significance in Maya culture? When did Henrik come on board? Where was he working before? I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Any ideas? Apparently, a Topeka woman named Prudence Rutherford has recently been visited by a red-handed thief, too. Do you have any idea how I might get in touch with her? Do you think Alejandro would go to extreme measures, like stealing, to reclaim Mexico's artifacts? Do you think the museum's security system is good enough? I've got work to do. Hi, is this Penelope? Oh, is this 605-555-3197? The art world? Wait, you're not Poppy Dada, are you? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a detective. I don't run into too many dead bodies, luckily. But there's plenty of other creepy stuff. Actually, I try to keep a low profile. And a tweed hat? Well, it's a little conspicuous. Taylor and I are both affiliated with Beach Hill Museum, also in D.C. Oh, it's a small world, you know. Taylor's a suspect in the case I'm working on. I beg your pardon, did you say Big Bunny? So far, I've managed to politely decline. I take it you advise against them? <laughs> Why, are they poisonous? Aha, my suspicions are confirmed. I'll put that in my case notes. Thanks for the tip, Poppy. I can see you're going to be a detective's best friend. Someone is stealing Maya antiquities, jade carvings to be exact, and leaving this scary red handprint at the scene of every crime. Before I get into that, tell me about the artwork you do. It looks very interesting. I'm afraid I'm a little rusty on my art terms. What do you mean? That sounds a lot more complicated than, say, painting or drawing. It sounds awfully hip. But you wouldn't advocate, say, drawing a mustache on the Mona Lisa, would you? No mafia that I know of. It seems like some kind of threat. But to whom? And what is this thief really after? It's more than money, I'm sure of it. It's printed with this stuff called cinnabar. Nobody seems to know what it means. All I know is the more I investigate, the more complicated it gets. I got a tip that your great-great-grandfather bought a jade carving, much like the ones that are being stolen. I'm hoping to take a look at it. I'm trying to track down certain Maya jade carvings that haven't fallen into the thief's hands yet. I think one of them might be in your family. You're kidding. That's a -a one-of-a-kind Maya artifact, a piece of history. It's hundreds of years old. It's worth a lot of money. Poppy, what were you thinking? You'll never get it back. I can't imagine your dad would be very pleased about this. Does he know? It seems awfully reckless to me, not to mention the wrench it throws into my investigation. The one with the rubber shark. Yes, I've seen it. But I didn't notice any jade carving. Deadly midnight snack. I think I know the one you mean. But I'd rather not bring Taylor into this, if it's okay with you. I'm just not sure whether I trust him. What? Poppy, you can't be serious. But wouldn't it ruin your painting? Something in its place? Like what? An old shoe? A subway token? A movie stub? I can choose anything? A light bulb? A magnifying glass? A pair of headphones? Okay, Poppy, if you say so. I'll do my best. It's a deal. I'll make sure he doesn't detect a thing. (laughs) Not quite. Taylor Sinclair told me about you. I saw one of your paintings in his office, here in Washington, D.C. No, no, you see, it's all a big coincidence. Your dad's name came up in connection with a case I'm working on. Sorry, Poppy, there's no FBI in on this case, and your dad's not wanted. Actually, I called hoping your dad could help me solve this case. No, no elephants involved. Not this time. There was a robbery at Beach Hill, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. This thief is after something big, and I've got to figure out what it is. Thanks, Poppy. Bye. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling from Washington, D.C. I'm trying to reach Prudence Rutherford, please. Miss Rutherford, it's Nancy Drew again. I'm sorry for what I said before. I didn't mean to insult you, but I've got to find out more about the carving you lost if I'm going to have any hope of recovering your necklace. Miss Rutherford, this is Nancy Drew. Please don't hang up. I'm afraid this case has got me a little wound up, but that's no excuse for bad manners. Please forgive me. I'm just very anxious to figure out why this thief is stealing Maya carvings, and I don't have much to go on. I'm sorry to hear about your loss. What can you tell me about the necklace? Did Mr. Rose fill you in on the museum theft? Yes, well, Mr. Rose is a notorious flatterer. Tell me, can you describe your necklace to me? I'll certainly do my best. 
Tell me, did the necklace have a lot of sentimental value to you? Where did you purchase the necklace? Was the necklace a gift? More? In what way? Did the necklace have a lot of sentimental value? What does the jade piece look like? Does the carving have any meaning that you know of? About the theft, where were you when it took place? Do you think the thief or thieves had any idea of what they were stealing? Was anything else taken besides the necklace? What about evidence? When did you realize that you'd been robbed? A red handprint was left at the scene of the crime at Beach Hill, too. Ms. Rutherford, I'm almost certain that these robberies were committed by the same person. A red handprint was left at the scene of the crime at Beach Hill, too. Miss Rutherford, I'm almost certain that these robberies are connected. Miss Rutherford, I'd like you to meet Beach Hill's epigrapher, Henrik Vanderhuhn. Is there any chance you could fly out to Washington for a couple of days? Miss Rutherford, it would be so helpful if I knew exactly what your carving looked like. Could you send me a picture that shows it in detail? But Miss Rutherford, surely someone else can step in for you. After all, this case is more important than a barn dance, isn't it? I understand, Miss Rutherford. Is there any other way you could get me some more detailed information about the jade carving? Oh, that would be wonderful. How soon could you have it here? Perfect. Let me give you the address. Thanks a million, Miss Rutherford. I won't let you down. I can't thank you enough, Miss Rutherford. And I hope the corn growers ball is a smash success. You're coming through loud and clear. Bye. I sure will. Goodbye. About the theft. Problems with a dog? Problems with a cat? Hi, do you sell a compound of mercury and sulfur? Hi, I'm the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill Museum. I wonder if you could answer a couple of questions for me about our ordering history. Actually, I didn't call to place an order. I just need some information on Beach Hill's ordering history. Well, the account number is BH008P, but... I'm not sure if we need any. You're sure it was last week? Do you know who placed that order? Was the package shipped to the museum? So there hasn't been a holdup at the distributor or anything like that? Can you remember anything about the person who picked up the package? Well, thanks for your help. Judging by the impression it left, I'd have to agree that the quality was fine. Problem? Not that I could hold you responsible for. Toxic? Well, I have heard that mercury poisoning can cause hallucinations and other symptoms of psychosis. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. I should talk to Joanna before I touch anything. The radio tube went out. Henrik! Henrik! It's blank. Why do I want to lug these heavy things around? These calendar stones are getting too heavy. I can't hold on to these for much longer. I've already solved this part. I'll have to choose which side of the cube goes here. Nothing happened. Um, hmm. Some of the tiles are missing. I should look for the missing tiles. Just one more tile. I'm starting to run out of air in here. <coughs> I gotta get out of here. <sighs> Uh, I can't breathe. Third pulp. I didn't finish it yet. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. I haven't finished that task. There, that looks like it's in order. I shouldn't be messing around with this without permission. There's Henrik's password. According to this chart, HG stands for mercury. S stands for sulfur. So the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur. It's too dark in here. I need a light. Uh-oh. I'm having trouble breathing. I'm running out of air. I can't. Breathe! Help! Someone get me out of here! Joanna! Help! I'm suffocating in here! Let me out! Yes. <laughs> wow! These are heavy. I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. I've got to put these things down. I can't hold on to them any longer. That's it. I should put in my temple key card. I need to find a temple key card. That doesn't work. Interesting. Hmm. This side looks damaged. Looks like this side is missing a part. The poem said, when the first king ascends again. This should be the last step. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> That's done. According to Henrik's notes, I need to make a key out of these pieces. I better deliver this to Alejandro right away. The knob is missing. Topeka Commission for the Arts. How cultured. Topeka Commission for the Arts. 
That's the organization Prudence Rutherford works for. It looks like a keyhole. What should I post here? It needs a card. I need a pen. Topeka Commission for the Arts. That's one of the museum's donors. It looks like some pieces are missing. I need to find another piece. There, now I can start putting this together. I need something to get this open. Good thing Franklin gave me the museum key. This may be the scribe's notes about Bacall. This will help you to remember. I don't think he'll be there at this hour. He won't be there this late. I think he only works during the day. Hmm, looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl. Who knew one piece of jade could have so much history? That looks right. Now I have the key. Welcome to my latest case, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. To start playing, choose either junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose tutorial. When you're in the center of a room, you can turn around in a circle to see the whole room. Move your cursor to the left or right edge of the screen and you'll automatically move in that direction. You can turn off this auto move feature in the game setup menu. And if you get stuck or feel like talking to someone you know you can trust, you can always call Bess and George. When you want to go back to where you came from or turn around, find where your cursor turns into an arrow at the bottom of the screen and click Diego de Landa. I wonder if that's one of the keys. Can you tell me what the password is to your disk? I have a feeling this may be one of Sonny's tricks. I wonder if Henrik would remember the answer. I bet I can make a mold from this foam core. They look delicious, but uh, no thanks. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. I'd better get my card back. I bet the login and password are on Sonny's disk. I wonder if this is something Sonny did. We can reuse this box for shipping. I'll just recycle this box. Um, the table will decode my results. I should hand over the paperwork. I guess I should give him the contract. I'll bet Sonny was working on this. I wonder if Franklin Rose oversees donations. Donations must go through the board of directors. I think I get the picture. I think I get the picture. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. So, you're looking for a state-of-the-art detective? So you're designating me as the museum's security upgrade? Oops, false alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. I'd like to place an order, please. May I speak to Silvio Jr., please? Are you still having a sale on packing supplies? Hi, it's Nancy Drew again from Beach Hill. Could you tell me about how long have we owed you this money? This is Nancy Drew. Uh, do you know offhand how much we owe you? Yes, I think so. We have an account number. Well, I haven't personally, but the museum has. BH119K. That's right. I'm the new deputy curator, Nancy Drew. You sound surprised. I guess you were expecting Sunny June. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm trying to cut back. Now, what's going on? Thanks. But I'm trying to cut back. No, thank you. You said Beach Hill is in jeopardy. I need to know why. No, thank you. Yes, your fears seem to have been quite visionary. I see you've spoken with Joanna. Do you think there's a connection between the two thefts? What does this have to do with Beach Hill? What does this have to do with Beach Hill? Does Joanna share your concerns? Doesn't Beach Hill have a security system in place? I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I'm just a detective, you know. I'm not bionic. I'll do my best, but it sounds like what you really need is a new breed of police dog. Okay, no more flattery. Hey, that's an interesting piece. There, by your desk. Something tells me it's not a Maya artifact. Modest mouse? <laughs> Most people call me Nosy Parker. But anyway, tell me something about the art business. Is that a contemporary painting? Is Poppy Dada her real name? No, but I could humor you. I guess that would make the painting a genuine artifact. Good thing you're not trying to make a living as a comedian. So, what about the painting? Please, Taylor, you've already tried that one on me. So, what about the painting? Have you spoken to the police? Do you think it's the same person who carried out those other thefts? Do you know Prudence Rutherford... Personally, what's the name of the museum in New Mexico? Why do you think the thief is leaving this red handprint? Joanna says you performed an act of wizardry in helping Beach Hill acquire the Pakal carving. A pig and a half? What crackdown? Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? May I take a closer look at that wacky Dada painting? I need a photo of the Pakal carving. 
Do you have one? There was an incident at the museum. Henrik is in the hospital with a head injury. Mind if I help myself to one of those scrumptious-looking Oaxacan cookies? I'd better get going. Who told you I was a detective? Hi there. I guess you've done your homework. Finally. Have you been expecting me? The B.O.D.? Well, I'm not on a case right now, that's for sure. I'm the new deputy curator, remember? Do diamonds count? But Beach Hill didn't buy this piece, did they? My understanding was that it's on loan from Mexico. So this is the monolith. Yeah, right. That must have been some shovel. Sorry, <laughs> but that's a little far-fetched, even for my imagination. I understand your concern, but what can I do to help? With so much writing on this exhibit? How can that be? What kind of jeopardy? Oh, no. Is there something I can do? What scoundrels? Joanna told you to butt out? Of what? You've got me worried. Can't we talk now? Where's your office? So, do you think this is linked to the thefts in Topeka and New Mexico? Did you hear? The thief left a glyph message with a red handprint on it. Is there a plan B for protecting the museum? Do you, by any chance, know what animal Pakal was afraid of? The Pakal thief's glyph message translates to The magician suffers yellow death. What in the world do you think that means? Do you have any idea what the Nahuatl word for snake is? Wow. Wow. Cool. Cool. No way. No way. No way. Not even. Not even. Right on. Coolio. 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 But anyway. But anyway. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Hello? Not even. Yeah, but no one calls me Penelope anymore. Except my parents, that is. To my friends, the art world, and anyone else who made it out of the 20th century, I'm Poppy. Ta-da! Ping ping! You win! Who's this? The artist, formerly known as Penelope, is O-O-C, O-T-H, T-D-T, and generally not in the mood. Please call back, S-O-T, that is, some other time. Peace. Hello? Hi, is this Penelope? Not even. Oh, is this 605-555-3197? Yeah, but no one calls me Penelope anymore. Except my parents, that is. To my friends, the art world, and anyone else who made it out of the 20th century, I'm Poppy. The art world? Wait, you're not Poppy Dada, are you? Ta-da! Ping ping! You win! Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a detective. A detective? No way! So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross, creepy stuff like that? A detective? No way! So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross, creepy stuff like that? A detective? No way! So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross creepy stuff like that? So, how do you know Big Bunny Sinclair? Has Taylor been pushing those Oaxacan cookies on you? You haven't eaten one, have you? Let's put it this way. His trip to Oaxaca was about two years ago, and he's been trying to move those rancid lard biscuits ever since. That's hot. What's the case? Are there dead bodies involved? Do you need to, like, tap my phone or impersonate me or something? It's a new form I made up myself. I approach each piece as a synesthetic, interactive, organic journey. Have you heard the saying that a work of art is never finished, just abandoned? Well, I'm taking that idea to the limit by making art that will keep changing as different people encounter, perceive, and interact with it. I'm tired of artwork that says, don't touch. I'm all about letting go, about sending my work into the world and seeing how it continues to become. Ugh, don't get me started on art. Now, what's your name again? Oh, yeah, Nancy. Let's have the dish. Who are you after? The Chinese mafia? Ghastly. So, what's with the red hand? Drama. So, where do the daddles come in? You mean that ancient green rock with the weird symbol on it? I slapped some shoe polish on it and stuck it in one of my paintings. That's the whole point. Don't you see? It's an organic process. I mean, how can people really relate to art if it doesn't come to life and, and, and grow and die just like they do?
That carving is part of something bigger now. Oh, Nancy, don't be such a prude. Taylor's probably still got that artwork. At least, I don't think he sold it yet. Why don't you ask him? Tell him you want to see the piece called Deadly Midnight Snack. It's the one with the rubber shark. Well, take a closer look there, sweets. It's in there. Fine with me. I know the big bunster, Mr. Bunny Tron. Well, he rubs some people the wrong way. Sure, why not? Of course not. After all, this is a chance to enact exactly what I've been talking about. The organic process. Inviting my viewers to interact with my work. The deal is, you can take the carving, but you have to put something in its place. No, it should be something more organic. Stay with the title, Deadly Midnight Snack. And don't be afraid to go way out. As an artist, I can tell you that inspiration bites in the most mysterious ways. Right on. But let's keep Taylor out of this. He'd probably blow a gasket if he saw you tampering with the merchandise. That's all art is to him, you know. Merchandise. So, where'd you get my name? Don't tell me I'm, like, wanted by the FBI or something. That would be too scandalous. Go dad. Don't tell me he's wanted by the FBI. I'll be so jealous. Okay, what then? South American drug lords? A sinister counterfeiting ring right here in Vermilion? Am I even getting warm? Are you kidding? Try finding yourself in line at the grocery store with your dad, your driver's ed teacher, and your creepy lab partner from last semester all at the same time. Vermilion is like some kind of petri dish for close encounters of the small world. But anyway. Oops. Just a little nickname I accidentally found out about. He made me promise to abolish it from my memory. Anyway, about your acquaintance, you were saying? Good luck, Nancy. Yes, hello. You have reached the villa of Prudence Rutherford. As you may have heard, the sanctity of my home has recently been violated. If you've reached this recording, it means I've gone to my quiet place. So please, don't leave a message. You are welcome to try back another time. If you are calling about the Corn Growers Ball, rest assured that the show will go on as scheduled on the 9th. Rutherford Estate, Prudence speaking. Oh yes, Franklin told me you'd be calling. Such dreadful news about Beach Hill. I will do everything in my power to help you catch those rapscallions. To think how they violated the sanctity of my domicile. Good heavens, he just told me that you're young and brilliant and that you might be able to get my fire ruby necklace back. I can't even think about it. Oh, just the very thought of my precious necklace gone, stranded, orphaned, and in the hands of some dirty stranger makes my blood boil. I inherited it from my mother-in-law. But you see, the necklace means much more to me than just a handful of priceless rubies. Yes, I'm afraid it did. I had the necklace restrung to include an exquisite jade carving as the centerpiece, a genuine artifact of the ancient Maya. The carving is not only one of a kind, but a Rutherford family heirloom given to me by my great-grandfather when I was just a little girl. It features a rare glyph. No one's been able to give me a precise translation, but most epigraphers have agreed that it has something to do with a snake, the color green, and the direction south. It's terribly fascinating. At 3 a.m.? Well, I was home, of course, lost in sweet slumber. I don't grace the social circuit the way I used to. That brazen fiend crept right into the bedroom and took my necklace away. Where was I? Picking peaches in the fruit-laden orchards of my dreams. I feel like such a fool. Nothing. Not even my brand new Dada. Synesthetic, interactive, organic journey. Ha! I always knew Dada was overrated. Oh, they must have known. The rest of my valuables were left untouched. Frankly, I don't know whether to be grateful or insulted. The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was this positively ghoulish red handprint on the wall. I nearly jumped out of my skin. But why? What is so special about these carvings? I'm afraid that's out of the question. 
The annual corn growers ball is just three weeks away, and I'm the head of the steering committee. Besides, this whole thing has left me so out of sorts. I'm in no condition to travel. For your information, the Corn Growers Ball is the largest gala event of the year in Topeka. Oh, I told Franklin I didn't want to speak to anyone, but he assured me you weren't the pushy type. I never should have agreed to this. Goodbye. I can do better than a photo. How about this? The insurance company made this dreadful replica of the necklace with the idea that I would wear such a thing to public functions. Please! But I could send that to you, if you'd like. As I said, this robbery was a trauma for me, and I do not wish to get deeply involved in the investigation. However, you have it tomorrow or the next day. My secretary will have the address of the museum. Now, if that is all you will require, young lady, I will need to attend to other pressing matters. Call me Prudence. Oh, and Nancy, when you find the villains who did this to me, do me a favor and give them a sound thrashing. Good heavens, one does not purchase such a piece. One moment, dear. Off! Off the sofa, you nasty beast! No! What are you doing? What did I say about the sofa? Bad, bad, naughty bad! I'm sorry, dear, what was I saying? Oh, yes! What? No, I was speaking to my husband, dear. My second husband. Soon to become my ex-husband if he continues to crawl on the furniture like that. Anyway, what was I saying? You've reached the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. The center is now closed. Regular hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week, except on major national holidays, when we are closed. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, I'm hoping to speak to someone about the theft that happened there recently. Are you the press? No, I'm a detective investigating a similar crime in Washington, D.C. Are you the press? Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. This is Sheila Schultz, the director. What would you like to know? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I understand you had some rare Maya artifacts stolen recently. That's right. It's a terrible loss, and the police here have no leads. Beach Hill was robbed, too. We lost one of our prized jade carvings. I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm wondering if the robberies are connected. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident at Chaco Canyon? Fire away. Yes. It was very gruesome. It looked like blood. But according to the police analysis, the print was made with a mercuric sulfide paste. Don't walk. Don't go there. Talk to the hand, as my 15-year-old would say. Really. I haven't the slightest idea. Only the center's most prized pieces. The case contained five pre-Columbian artifacts that were excavated right from this area. There were three pottery pieces, a small stone figurine with a snake head, and an ornamental jade carving. It was highly unusual. There was a glyph on it that no one could translate. Until we hired Henrik Vanderhune, that is. His opinion was that it's Mayan in origin, and that it may have been a place name glyph for this area. As you can imagine, we regarded it as something of a regional treasure. Yes, I know. His departure was a great loss for us. I guess it didn't seem important. No, it happened just a few days after he left. I remember because after the police left, the staff and I were so depressed, we went into the lounge and pigged out on the rest of Henrik's farewell cake. Well, it was awfully abrupt. As soon as he heard about that monolith, boom, he was gone. For some reason, he just had to go study it. We weren't exactly happy about it, but it's not like quitting is against the law. How could I forget? He went on and on about the impossibly rare artifacts he could get for us. I said, are you an art dealer or a smuggler? But he assured me that the provenance documents would all be in order. Still, I never did any further business with him. He just seemed... slippery. I'm afraid I sent our only print off to the insurance company. They said they'd return it, but who knows when our claim will be processed. I'm sorry. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. What can I do for you? Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. What can I do for you? I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? Not off the top of my head, but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around. Can you call back later? Not off the top of my head, but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around.
Can you call back later? Sure thing. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. Well, we racked our brains. Finally, one of my staff came up with the original box that the carving was packed in. The piece was encased in a tight foam cast to prevent damage during shipping. I'm not sure how much good it'll do you, but I can send it to you if you like. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address, so I know what to do. I'll send it express. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address, so I know what to do. I'll send it express. Thanks a million, Sheila. Definitely the jade carving. Good luck with your investigation. Anytime. Bye. I know those pieces like the back of my hand. Silvio's Curatorial Bonanza. Silvio's Curatorial Bonanza is open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Please call back during regular business hours. Silvio's. This is Silvio, Jr. What can I do for you? That's right. 30% off on bubble wrap, foam peanuts, Heavy-duty tape, medium and large boxes, sticky labels, and why supplies last, of course. Have you ordered from us before? Okay, good. That saves me a lot of paperwork. What's the account number? BH119... BH119K? Beach Hill? Are you serious? Well, whoop-dee-doo, it's Nancy Drew. But Silvio's Curatorial Bonanza no longer does business with Beach Hill. I was expecting Beach Hill to settle its accounts with me about six months ago. I've sent all six of the outstanding invoices to a collection agency. And you jokers won't get another packing peanut out of Silvio Jr. ever. Do not call here again. I thought I told you to beat it. Silvio Jr. is through with the whole lousy bunch of you. Atención, ocho, tres, dos, siete, uno. Label. Error. Mensaje entendido. Transmítalo ahora. Mensaje recibido. Entregaremos el paquete lo más pronto posible. Cambio y fuera. Transmítalo ahora. Este canal no está recibiendo transmisiones. You've got me there. Who'd you expect, the Tooth Fairy? Who knows? Looks like someone forgot her beauty cream. I guess we can't all age gracefully. Nancy, do you have any idea what that book contains? The Whisperer's writings are the only known personal account of my life. The only written glimpse into Bacall's time anywhere. Do you know what I can get for that thing on the black market? What in the world? <laughs> Confound you, Nancy Drew! It's about time. Oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my poor old carcass. Want a cookie? They're from Oaxaca. What's up? Seen anything suspicious? It's a fiasco just as I feared. Oh, I'm sick, sick, sick about the whole thing. The art world is being ransacked, Nancy. Prudence Rutherford, a major patron of the arts, had her fire ruby necklace stolen from her villa in Topeka. Two weeks later, a whole display case full of rare Maya artifacts was heisted from a museum in New Mexico, the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. I'm just telling you, this community, our friends and colleagues, my people are being systematically trounced by thugs. Who's to say Beach Hill won't be next? You've got to do something. The museum has a basic alarm system, but it's not exactly state of the art. I've urged Joanna to approach the board about making some security upgrades, but she just keeps saying that the timing isn't right to ask for money. We need your eagle eyes. We need your bat ears. We need you to sniff out the stink of trouble. Don't play modest mouse with me. I was in the museum when it happened. I told them everything I know. I mean, I coughed up my brains right there on the table. That awful red hand was left on Prudence Rutherford's jewelry box in Topeka and on the display case in the museum in New Mexico. What's the chance they're not connected? Oh, we saw each other at functions now and then. Poor Prudence. She adored that necklace. They had a beautiful collection up there, worth a bundle, too. I appraised some pieces for them a few years back. To be a gruesome scoundrel? Getting those provenance docks together was a pig and a half. Oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. But ah, uh, to have been at the height of my career back before the crackdown, those were the days. Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today, though, Nancy. <laughs> and I say Alejandro is the real bully of the playground. 
A lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. Standard, 10%. It's no king's ransom. Unless, of course, you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? How about that rubber shark? The artist's name is Poppy Dada. She's a teenager in South Dakota. The art world is going bananas over her stuff. I'll unload that one for some serious dinero. Be my guest. I just had a call from Poppy this morning. She says she's in a really creative period right now. I said, please, sweetie, if you get any more creative, they're going to lock you up. <laughs> Joanna took the official print for her insurance claim, but I have a couple extras. Here you go. Poor Henrik. Another squabble between him and Joanna, perhaps? Oh, I'm kidding, but I do remember the time she threatened to push him in the pond. Temper, temper, I'm always telling her. Be my guest. Thanks for stopping by. Keep up the good work. Nancy Drew, or should I say, Detective Drew. I'm Sinclair. I was at a meeting with the BOD recently, and I caught wind of your appointment and your credentials. Very impressive, if I do say so myself. That would be the board of directors, those cranky old cats. They do keep the ducks squared away around here. I'll give them that. So, how's this for a specimen? Ever seen a million dollars worth of rock before? You bet your socks it is. Would you believe I dug it up in my backyard? Ouch. Well, they did say you were sharp. Seriously, though, thank goodness you're here. I'm afraid the museum may be in terrible jeopardy. Joanna told me to butt out, but I'm so fond of Beach Hill, I just hate to see it fall prey to scoundrels. It's a sensitive subject. Meet me in my office later and I'll explain everything then. Just meet me later. 707 Bing Cherry Boulevard. I've got to go. Enjoy your first day at Beach Hill.